good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome back um, to the TRRC as we start the second week of our three-week um, 19th um, session. Imam, you have the floor if you can offer some prayers, please. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. Rahman Rahim Maliki Yawadjin. Iya kan abudu wa iya kan istain. Hijina sirat al mustaqim. Sirat al jina alam ta'alihim. Qayr al mahdubi alayhim wa ladalim. Rabbana innana amanna. Faqfir lana zunubana wa qina azab al nar. Al sabirina wa al sadiqina. Wa al qanitina wa al munfiqina. Wa al mustaqfiruna bil iskhar. شهد الله أنه لا إله و ملائكة و أولو العلم قائما بالإست لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم ربنا أعطينا في الدنيا حسنة و في الآخرة حسنة و أعينا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون و سلام على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين أمين يا الله شكرا إمام جالول بشوف يهاب الفلو بليس تانك يشيومان most holy and uh, merciful God, uh, the creator of all humankind uh, throughout the whole universe. <coughs> we continue to thank you for your graciousness over all humankind, for seeing us through the past year of grace, 2020, from the beginning of it to the very end of it, and for ushering us to another year of grace, 2021. We continue to depend upon your security, your defense, your protection, your providence, your healing power, and uh, your spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation. We continue to ask that you will grant us good governance and good administration and good businesses throughout the whole wide world in this new year this new dispensation. We continue to commit uh, the sittings of the TRRC to you as we begin this new year. We commit all the witnesses that will, that are lined up to come before this commission. And we ask that you shall grant them the boldness to speak the truth. Grant the commission the designing spirit to design between truth and falsehood. And also grant the entire population of this nation and the diaspora, the patience to see through the due process of the proceedings. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, um, Bishop Odeko. Um, before we start our uh, proceedings, getting witnesses, just want to add the voice of um, uh, TRRC to those um, uh, around the world paying tribute to uh, a stalwart of the UN, the United Nations, and uh, one of um, uh, the founders of uh, United Nations peacekeeping operations, which was um, uh, uh, copied uh, uh, by regional organizations and the sub-regional organizations in establishing uh, peacekeeping operations. The word peacekeeping um, does not appear in the charter, uh, but Sir Brian Urquhart, who died uh, yesterday in New York at the age of 101, was at the heart of uh, uh, the establishment of um, peacekeeping operations in which um, uh, uh, the Gambian summer participated very, very well in all three components of uh, uh, UN peacekeeping operations. The military, where we had our uh, Gambian armed forces and um, contributing contingents, uh, they performed very well in difficult areas. Uh, they civilian uh, police component as well. We had uh, Gambia police force officers and uh, 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 um, uh, staff participating in uh, safe ball operations around the world, as well as um, uh, the third component, which is uh, the 
civilian component. We had um, uh, several Gambians uh, going around the world participating in, uh, uh, in the peacekeeping, peace building operations. One of the uh, uh, persons um, who had done that is our own lead council who had um, uh, uh, gone to East Timor to participate in the uh, civilian component of that. Now, to pay tribute um, to Sir Brian Urquhart, I thought um, uh, the easiest and the quickest way of doing that is just read very brief from a statement issued by the Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez in New York, um, a few hours ago on uh, Sir Brian Urquhart. So if you, with your permission, we will read that brief from a statement. Uh, it, the SG issued this statement in New York. I'm deeply saddened at the passing of Sir Brian Urquhart, the legendary long-time United Nations official. I offer condolences to his family and to his legions of admirers within and beyond the United Nations. So Brian's imprint on the United Nations was as profound as that of anyone in the organization's history. As one of the organization's earliest employees, he set them at the standard for the international civil service, dedicated and impartial. As an aide to Secretary General Doug Hammarskjöld, he helped them to define the UN summer scope of action in addressing armed conflict and the other global uh, challenges. And as a close associate of Ralph Bunch, the renowned UN official and the Nobel Peace Prize, Prize winner, Sir Brian helped them to establish and then propel international peacekeeping into wide-ranging use. Across the decades, in service to several of my predecessors, Sir Brian was at the center of formative global events, from the Congo to the Middle East. His involvement in global affairs continued well after the end of his UN career through extensive writings that included definitive biographies of Hamashol and the Bunch. He was um, also a mentor for UN staff and the countless young people as they pursued their careers. Writing in his memoir, A Life in Peace and War, about him at the earliest days of the United Nations, Sir Brian noted that, quote, we were all optimists who believed in the possibility of uh, organizing a peaceful and a just world, end quote. Sir Brian Urquhart maintained that optimism across his life, shaping the United Nations and the history itself. We are grateful for his brilliant and uh, incomparable contributions as a stalwart servant of, quote, we the peoples, end quote. That's the end of the statement that the SG uh, issued uh, in New York. We will reproduce it here, and they just have it in the room if anybody wants to get a copy of it. He was the quintessential um, international civil servant, as the SG had indicated. He was um, the second person to be recruited by the United Nations in 1945. Uh, you will recall the Charter Conference ended on the 26th of June in uh, San Francisco, uh, 1945, and uh, uh, a, a, an executive commission was established to look at, uh, to see the transition period uh, uh, taken care of. Sir so Brian was working with uh, Sir Gladwin Jeb who was uh, then the executive secretary of the conference. So they made him executive secretary of um, the commission. And many refer to Sir Gladwin Jeb as possibly the 
uh, first I'm a Secretary General, Interim Secretary General, so I'm the Acting Secretary General uh, of the United Nations. But Brian was at, at, his, at his side all the time, uh, working with him, and uh, when uh, the first Secretary General, Trick Vili of Norway, was um, appointed, Brian continued working with Trick Vili and uh, Ralph Bunch uh, as, as well. Brian's um, uh, background sort of helped him to come to that um, point. He was a, a young soldier involved in the war in Germany, and uh, he uh, was one of those people who liberated one of the German concentration camps. Uh, the Belsen, uh, Bergen-Belsen co concentration camp. But what he had seen there motivated him to find a peaceful way as, he, as the Secretary General Court of um, settling matters and uh, maintaining justice as well. Uh, we owe him a lot. Our uh, nationals, our compatriots, Gambians who participated in both and in the military sec section of peacekeeping operations, in the civilian uh, police component and the civilian um, component, uh, you guys did very well. We would have to um, uh, thank you. You went out to diff difficult areas um, uh, to serve uh, the United Nations. But Brian is the, <laughs> the, the embodiment of UN peacekeeping. Uh, we hope um, uh, he would rest in, uh, in peace. For a 101-year-old man, he was a good man. We met him, I knew him in New York, and uh, after he had left, that's when I, uh, well, he had left him actually, but was not really retired. We we're bringing him back every now and then to come and talk to uh, the people. I have to tell you one little story. He had, uh, we were handling peacekeeping operations some, uh, in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations, and uh, we had created a communications unit called the uh, Situation Center. Brian used to come in from time to time, and uh, one time we invited him to come to what we were calling Brown uh, Bag Lunch, uh, where we get prominent people to come. The staff would take their lunch break, but we would all be in the conference room, and they would, talk, um, they would come and talk to us, share their views and experience about them and peacekeeping. So Sir Brian was scheduled to come, and uh, I was chairing that meeting in DPKO, and uh, went out to meet him at the uh, entrance um, of the UN yard, and uh, we walked him together. And uh, I had seen something in his book on Tamasho, and I told him, Sir Brian, you're going to have a very different Tamasho um, situation after the lecture. You and I are going to go to the uh, center, the situation center, and I show you what improvement we have made on communications um, uh, uh, that we established at the UN. And uh, uh, I told him about an incident in that book that he narrated when Ralph Bunch and uh, Hamashol flew to the Congo, and uh, that's the trip that uh, Hamashol eventually died when the plane crashed in Ndola, uh, uh, present-day Zambia. But when Hamashul left um, uh, for, I think it was Katanga, he had gone to Katanga, he left um, uh, Ralph Bunch in uh, Leopoldville, now Kinshasa. And when he got um, uh, to, but before he left, he had uh, worked out a, a code uh, with um, uh, Ralph, um, so they can uh, uh, communicate easily through that code. When uh, uh, Hamashol got to that, to, to, to Katanga, Hamashol um, somehow could not find the code. So Ralph, some, uh, Ralph Bunches, uh, his some message went to him, but he couldn't decode it. He had to, because he had to have the code in front of him. And he, he said, so he remembered, Sir Brian remembered that incident very well. And I told him, well, what we have in our situation center now is um, uh, 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 the secured lines. And uh, if you had been, if we had had that time, Bunch would have um, spoken to, uh, through the center, he would have spoken to uh, Doug Hamashol in, uh, in, uh, in, in Katanga. 
But anyway, he was a, he was a Brian was a very, very uh, uh, able fellow. He's a guy who really uh, cared very much and dedicated his life uh, to the organization. Sorry for this long tribute, but I thought that we pay tribute to our own um, uh, nationals who served in those um, three components that I mentioned, as well as some um, tribute to, um, to Sir Brian. Council, do you have any uh, thing to you were in Estimo, in that civilian component. <laughs> and, uh, if you care to share something before we get the witness, uh, you can proceed um, after your uh, uh, thank observations. You. And, thank, uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am honored and privileged to have been uh, among those first few Gambians to go on UN peacekeeping and uh, for also um, helping to start to get Gambians going on peacekeeping missions, especially those in the serving forces, the police and the, and the military, and also uh, to a large extent civilians. Uh, the, uh, what I wanted to say is that we have our own Sir Brian Ecker uh, in the person of the chairman who's done extensively uh, great work to advance uh, the course of the United Nations of international peace and security around the world. Uh, I mean, what he has not told us uh, is that uh, what they have done, really, him and his likes. I used to call him the shadow of Kofi Annan. Wherever you saw Kofi Annan, you see Dr. Sisi right there uh, in the thick of things, uh, helping to shape uh, how the world order uh, is, is, is is, is going to, well, the international peace is going to be maintained around the world. Apart from this little story he's just told you about communications in the UN, or the use of codes as at, uh, at in, the, in the late 1940s or early 1950s, he hasn't told you how it was used uh, in one important mission here. <laughs> he, he, he went to, in, uh, was it in Sweden or somewhere in Europe? I think it was in Geneva. So Dr. Sise has interesting stories and anecdotes about the United Nations. I think, in fact, you would rank as one of the best historians of actual work in the United Nations. I look forward to the day when Gambia would have uh, some institute where international peace and security would be a core subject, and Dr. Sise would be one of the key instructors uh, to first for, for, for our diplomats and students to learn from his experiences as a top diplomat at the, at the UN. He's one of the most dedicated uh, UN uh, personnel I have ever met. He always has the UN charter at his breast pocket. <laughs> He's the only one I know who does that. So that just shows his commitment to to the ideals of the United Nations. While we thank Sir Brian, we also thank you. And we also hail you as our Sir Brian for all the work you've done for the United Nations. You've raised Gambia's flag flying in the UN. Thank you for your service. And we also thank, we, <laughs> we also thank our men who, and women who served in peacekeeping missions around the world. Uh, dangerous places. I recall when I arrived in East Timor, some of the buildings were still smoldering. You, you still had ashes in some of the buildings. We had to re literally get into the buildings to clear them ourselves in order to find accommodation. So, but these are sacrifices that people have to make to ensure that there is peace and security around the world. It is through this work that Today we are b enjoying the benefits of having a comic in our country, even though some may not like it. Uh, but uh, this is how the system works. Uh, it is important that there be international peace and security for, for, for development. On that note, Mr. Chair, I ask that the witness be brought in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. While um, the witness is being ushered in, uh, was the spectrum tribute um, to be paid to me, I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, but we just honor and hail you. Yeah, you very, Thank you very, very much. Very kind indeed. Um, uh, and that's there. So, well, they are alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much.
I, Tamsir Jasse. I, Tamsir Jasse. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Jasse. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the TRRC. Thank you. Well, first of all, compliments of the season. Same to you. And uh, thank you for agreeing to come to testify before the commission. Um, today we would wish to talk to you uh, about a few things. Uh, that is your biographical information, uh, your encounters with uh, former CDS, late Colonel Ndurcham, and uh, how those encounters have led to um, he, him giving you information that an alleged coup d'etat, that a planned coup d'etat had failed, how you eventually uh, went to his assistance, and uh, how you were subsequently arrested uh, in, in regards to that coup d'etat, the investigations that took place uh, at the NIA premises, your eventual conviction and sentence and uh, the time you served at mile two prisons. Uh, we would also wish to talk about the conditions of the prison, some of the difficulties that were encountered, how you eventually came to be pardoned uh, and uh, released through the intervention of uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson and how you left the country. And uh, the commission may also give you an opportunity to say a few words about your experiences and uh, the, uh, the kind of Gambia that you envisage uh, where, where we should have, drawing mainly from the experiences that you went through uh, dur dur during this difficult period. Are you ready to talk about that? Yes, I am. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, may I just remind you that uh, you are on the oath? Um, it is obviously, you know as much as I do, that it's a criminal offense to lie on the oath in this country. It is also an offense to provide false information to the TRRC. Uh, as a matter of procedure, we do have interpretation in one of the local languages. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you are very fluent in, in, in English language, um, but uh, you just allow us to interpose um, uh, interpretation in, in the world of language this time around, and uh, for the benefit of those listening to the testimony at home. So kindly allow for a brief moment for the interpreters to, to take their positions. Okay. And uh, because we would have interpretation, we should allow for about three seconds okay. uh, between your speech and that of the interpreter, okay. and obviously between mine and, and the interpreter, so that the speeches would not overlap. Okay. Uh, uh, we said in the interpretation book. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, once again, welcome, Mr. Jasse. Thank you. Mr. Jasse, you are the CTRRC. Uh, could you kindly tell us your full names, please? My name is Tamsir Mumudu Jase. What is your date of birth? August 6, 1957. Uh, where were you born? From Banjo. Could you answer now? Banjo. Okay. That's right. And uh, of, uh, you were born Gambian, obviously you are a Gambian citizen. Do you hold another citizenship? Yo, what do you mean with Gambia? Finga, ndafu si jamu na bini yangu ame benen do you mean with ya si benen deka? Yes, I'm also a U.S. citizen. Wow, mani do you mean with America la? Ndah, danga am kiet bula do def do you mean benen deka? And you answered. 
that you are a U.S. citizen. Yes, I'm a U.S. citizen. That's right. So, um, where did you go to school? Um, I went to primary school at Albion School. primary school, Albion Primary. Then I went to St. Augustine's High School. And then I, then I went to Georgia State University. And Georgia State University. And then eventually Southern New Hampshire University. What qualifications did you attain from these universities, Georgia State and uh, New Southern New Hampshire University? Georgia State, I obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Georgia State, my um, uh, bachelor's degree. BA or BSC? BSC. Yeah. With a concentration in police administration and operations. And uh, then for your master's? I have a master's degree in terrorism and homeland security. I a master's degree in terrorism and homeland security. Uh, from, uh, from, from Southern New Hampshire from University. From Southern New Hampshire University. From Southern New Hampshire University. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's bear in mind that there are interpreters. Okay. There, there is this tendency yeah. that you would respond immediately. I have asked my question. You know, I've heard the name. Come, I'm not going to mention the name. You're a lot of it. The man I'm telling you, my dear, is my life. But if you go away, you're going to turn to. You're going to go away. I do. I second you. No, but I'm going to turn to. Because you're not going to talk. You're going to talk. Uh, and of course, after, aside from these two qualifications, the BSc and your master's, the master's is MA, and, right? Yes. Book passing no, is MSc. MSc, all right. Yes. Okay. Okay. MSc in terrorism and, uh, and homeland security. Good. Uh, you also had some postgraduate diplomas, didn't you? I'm not going to have a definite postgraduate diploma. Yes, I hold a graduate certificate on public administration and a second one on justice studies. Yes, uh, both from the same uh, SNHU, right? Southern New Hampshire University. Yes. Wow. But prior to your uh, move to the United States, you did work in the Gambia, didn't you? Why, Balanga took in Adam de Cabuno, United States, Musna Liga Fisiromi, Gambia. Yes, I did. I briefly, I was a teacher at St. Augustine's Junior Secondary School when I taught English language and history. Wow, Liga in Archidil Bugatta, St. Augustine's High School, for Funak, the Mafadon Yangale. St. Augustine's Secondary School. Senior Secondary. St. Augustine Senior Secondary School. Junior Secondary Junior. Junior. Yes, where you taught English language and English and history. And history. For them, Jangan and Fufudunu, English and history. Longer than Jangan and Fufu. And then, thereafter? Mufa Lulu Joye. I worked for the Gambia Airways at the Ground Traffic Unit. Ligay Natami from the Hamlet. From the International Airport. Mondi, Gambia Airways, Ligay Nafufu it. And when did you move to the U.S.? In 1984. In 1984, And what did you do uh, before you started your education in the U.S.? Langa de gunga age a U.S. Balanga door lige. Langa don de fang. Balanga door janga. Balanga door janga. I serve in the United States military, the United States Navy. And uh, U.S. Marine Corps, is it? No, the Navy. No, the difference? Um, the Marines, it's under the United States Navy, but it's a special unit. Okay. So you could be moved, depending on what kind of job you do and the situation, you could be attached to the Marine Corps. Okay. But you are Navy? Yes. All right. And uh, were you, did you go through any deployments? Yes. What? 
Ok. Nous avons dit Yes, I was deployed at uh, Operation Desert Storm, the first Gulf War in Saudi Arabia. And you left the U.S. Navy after having served how many years? Ten years. And you left at what rank? But Mahamanga Fajoge Kohwale, the Petty Officer First Class. Officer First Class. Petty, petty Officer First Class. Petty yeah. Officer First Class. And, uh, and it was after this that you decided to go and do some university education. Actually, I started my education career whilst I was still serving. They have a program in which people who wish to pursue uh, edu further education are allowed to do so. Okay. But ultimately you finished your, you got your qualifications uh, in 1990, was it 1996? Yes, you yeah. earned your first degree in 1996. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when did you return to the Gambia for the first time to work? Can you not tell me what fees you owe me Gambia fee? Do not delegate. Sinjel Beni on me. July first, nineteen ninety nine. July Beni Fanti, autumn nineteen ninety nine. Could you just give us a brief background uh, as to how that happened so that we can get the context of what brought you back? Munga nyowa na sigadal kumlolo numu hewe one punga ham na nyumo nse ham tuti. Yes, in 1994, December, my mother passed away. Well, wow, atum 1994, December, And I came home for the funeral. And uh, that's when I observed that the Gambia Police Force could use some help in reforms. So I wrote a reform program and gave it to the then Inspector General of Police. And who was that at the time? Proceed, please. And uh, I was then invited to come and try to implement some of those reforms. And, and which year were you called to come and do that? I, uh, that was in 1999, July 1st. And then what happened after that? Um, I was appointed as police advisor. Uh, who do you would you say was responsible for that decision? Um, my understanding at the time was that the Ministry of Interior wanted it and they had convinced the President Jami to approve it. Uh, essentially, uh, Jame must have either made or endorsed the decision. Yes, because upon my arrival, I was taken to his office by the then Minister of Interior, Mr. Usman Baji. And uh, in that meeting, 
President Jame suggested to Mr. Baji that I be appointed Inspector General of Police immediately. Chandaje mumu nga hamne na mumu nga nse khon ak President bi. Chila President bi lal di digal nak minister wine nang ma jil joh ma ma khama Inspector General of Police tek taha wai ba. Minister Baji and myself agreed that that would be unwise because I have been away for so long I may not fully understand the political terrain, the crucial settings and all of the things that would be required to do the job. Minister Baji and myself agreed that that would be unwise because I have been away for so long I may not fully understand the political terrain, the crucial settings and all of the things that would be required to do the job. Minister Baji and myself agreed that that would be unwise because I have been away for so long I may not fully understand the political terrain, the crucial settings how did he respond? Um, then he asked the minister to get me the appropriate, that what he felt was the appropriate position in which I could work with the IGP, and that's when we settled for the position of advisor. And after that you set out to work as advisor, correct? Did you remain in that position for the rest of your service in the police? Dan lulu mahama bodoh, dan fani kon besi zaman lebih ngah mande yang gaya by polis ba. No, after the April 10th incident, the then IGP Mr King retired and. Dari gana hew hew bobo amonchi April 10, cila IGP bawa on Mr King dal di by lagi. And uh, Mr. Sankung Baji, who was his deputy, was appointed Inspector General of Police. Sankung Baji, minga hamne moto ponchi kom, nyudal di egal mahama, man defko Inspector General of Police. And I was appointed deputy Inspector General of Police. Man na chile nyme jil na topal ma chiko Inspector General of Police. And for how long did you serve in that position? Legi naka nga yage si mahama bobo nono. As far as I can remember, I was there up to the December of 2000. Lima cuma nak fakir aku dah, ya karena mangga fon beberapa Disember atau 2000. And why were you? Why did you stop work? Lu tengah bayi lagi bi, orang tengah tahawal lagi bi. Um, during that period, there was I had attended a seminar in which I made made a presentation with the Honourable Khalifa Salah. Jemana bonek, amon na benanda jabo hamne jemon na fomadaral fon aikadu mana onaribul halifa sala. And I presented a paper on the role of the security forces in a democracy. Amne kibo hamne na garal on na kofadi fawone linga hamne mo di tahawai ni ano wali karangegi chwali doheni demokrasi. And I criticized military regimes. Madal di nganya na kenjiti soldari. I remember actually saying that the Gambia army has no place in the state house. And uh, the audience liked it. But the president didn't. So that's from the information I was getting from people who were close working with me and had access to the state house. Uh, state house. I was told to buy El Sahel. Um, the and buy El Sahel in this context would mean you have to be careful. I have to be careful, correct. Wow, ni nena ba isu mahel buba. Proceed. But the what I thought would have been the result of suma ba isu mahel. Manali mu fagon nena kado gogo ni suma ba isu mahel lolo mo cha fahiko. Is to be fired. Mo ene nena den mada ha. That's good. Wow, but eba. No, that didn't bother me. Manali lolo ya haluma wong. So I just continued. Manali continue rek. On the reform programs, trying to change the mindset and uh, helping the police with human rights training and proper 
methods of operation ci program bi nga xamne nak ma continuer ci lima don def rek pour dimbalé police bi ci ay sopali yo xamne ñu ko don def sen walli liggéey ak li nga xamne modi ax ak yelle fi dom adama ni nga xamne non lañ ko wara doxalé and i was fired december of 2000 ci lay madal di dax ci liggéey bi nak wéri december at 2000 would you say few weeks after you you made that uh, statement in the conference mo nga wone si ay wiki fane yu new si bu jamono bi nga xam ya ngi garal cadre bo ci lañ la da o not long after wala ya ko ton actually i made that statement in may and i got fired in december in december so there was quite ignore_time_segment_in_scoring bi nga doon garal sa card yi lolou mo waral ñu daax la um i cannot precisely say that's the reason but actually when i made the statement i came into his radar that's what i like eh ñu bu ñu ñu wax ne lolou sabab bi da way mu na wax ne bama joxe card yi daal ci commencer nak dima baye xel what did you do after that la nga def pour fa lolou firing i went nga def bu la daxe be pare lo def fati I returned to the United States. Dama delu wa rewi America. And did you come back? Nda delu si nga wat? Yes, um shortly after 9/11. Wa wu gannaaw bo xame ne hef hef wi amon niñ ko wax 9/11. I received a phone call from the then British High Commissioner. Dama am telephone bo xamne ki nga xamne moy British High Commissioner mama ko o who offered me an opportunity to work with the security of the high commission here in banjo nga xamne na mo ma doxon liggey ne ma ñew liggey high commissioner bi nek fi banjo amé wali karange gi my understanding of that job was that after the incident of 911 man nak ni may yeggou ci wali liggey bobu ñu ma doon wax moy ganaar xew xew bobu amon ñu diko 911 The British government was upgrading security around its embassies and high commissions around the world. Euh nguuri ang Angleterre dañ doon jëm yokk nak gëna dëggëral li nga xamné modi karange gi ci seen wali liggéey kay nek ci adina bi yëpp. And the strategy was to look for <coughs> local talent in every country. Té li nga xamné moy sarfay ak yoon yi ko doon jëlé moy ñu sét ñi nga xamné ay borom xam xam lañ ci wali liggéey bi té doon doomi réew yi fofa do the work ñu mëna def liggéey bi and let the home office come and uh, review what has been done uh, bu ko defé nak ñi nga xamné ñoy wa angleterre yow yi nga xamné ñom lañu liggéey ñom ñu sétaan li nga xamné mom lañ fa def lan la i did that work ma def liggéey bi they came made the uh, made the review ñu ñew def seen sétlu and gave it a thumbs up ñu dal di woné né contact nañ ci loolu and uh, did you do any other work for the british high commission ndax def nga benen liggey liggey nga benen liggey pour british high commission bi yes the high commissioner asked me to stay on to train his staff the security staff high commissioner bi daf ma laaj na ne legi na dess ma muna jangal ni nga xamne ño fa liggey te amé wali karange gi and he gave me the position of chief security officer mo dal di ma jox ma xam nak ma jité security officer ya fa nek yépp moy karange gi fa nek and in whilst i was doing that job jamono ji ma doon def liggéey bu i got a call from again minister of interior mr usman sonko mr mr sorry mr usman badji usman badji mi nga xamné mo yow minister wi amé karange bi réew mi dal di ma o téléphone and uh, said that he had gotten clearance from the president ne nak ki president bi jox nako yon uh and he wanted to offer me the position of uh director of immigration ne dafa ma bugga jox liggey ma nek director bu immigration because the uh, the the present director then was about to go on retirement mr njai mr njai ma nga xamne mo nekkon director bi mo ngone waja dem nak pour retire the i turned down the 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 offer man nak nanguma lolu ligey bobu ñu ba doon wara jox 
because the position of director was chief superintendent. Ndakte eh palace director bu won chief superintendent. It was less power, less money and less rank. Te maha ma bagina soufi, alis bagina new te li nga hamne mo di ligay bi mo gena feti souf. Was the initial of <coughs> the position of director or was it that of deputy director? Ndakpa ha ma bunila bu wana jo. Mahama la bina hamante mumlende oye director wala danga topa si director bi. The official offer, the initial offer. Ngel ben bi wana. The initial offer officially was deputy director. Kwa chen ngel ben ni mando mbuga joh ligye imo ima topa si director bi. And that is the position you said was at the rank of chief superintendent, was at the rank of rather superintendent and it was less money, less power and less rank. Yang ini wanita kom mahamu bubu nunggu garun wanita kom depan ini kom mahamu binga hamat dene dole amu amu dole amu dole buba halis bi bari wood. Actually, I was focusing on the position of director, which is what I was going to be in a very short period. Lima wah nusa manci don jublu palas director binga hamne dina kodon don cilu banyak yaga. And then the ministry. Lagi kaya minister bi. Um, decided to upgrade the position um, to the level of uh, at the same a par with the deputy inspector general of police and uh, i then accepted the position so you became director general of immigration that is correct. And uh, what specific work uh, were you to embark upon or specific projects did you embark upon as Director General? I was a Director General. I was a The request that I had from the minister himself was to try to come up with a general reform program for the department. And so we actually worked together on that. I would prepare documents and have his review and input. And uh, one of the results of our effort was the Interior Enforcement Unit of the Immigration Department. And what else? Aglan. Um, there are other reform efforts that we're taking up and uh, in general it was becoming very successful because the immigration department seemed to attract less political attention. Um, Wow, it's a program you you know, I'm not you to bury your hamne for her corner chi, I'm not I saw probably bury your hamne definitely cover that the sector on a bit like a immigration bill I'll do when you a good living a hamne you blue and then call all to a little in a politic that your suggestion was that you are more successful simply because the immigration department was well below the political radar pretty much Kom lingan yang kau dah mui, lihat bunyinya santun. Soalnya na, kita zaman nubu bunu immigration department, ye fi politik duga lusu orang nubu bapa. That is correct. Igala. And apart from the interior enforcement unit, which other projects did you embark upon as director of immigration? Bapa se interior enforcement unit, binga hamat lulu lulu santun, perangai ligai, engkau dah farko. Bupati lulu, ban ban botai yang ngaliga ya, ban ligai yang ngadefar. We, I worked with the late Abdul Rahman Toure of Pristine Company. Ligai na agdem siyalas Abdul Rahman Toure, bu perebiyo wa Pristine Company. To introduce the new ID cards that we have now. Purnak new indifi ID card you basic ngahamne mumlen yore ni ligi. And the idea was to 
My idea was to convince the ministry to create a new department that we may call Passport and Civil Registration Directorate. And the immigration department will become purely an enforcement department. Um, I felt that would make the department, the ministry more efficient. And cut out as much as possible the handling of cash within the immigration department. Because we, we had had a lot of discrepancies with. with cash handling. And it was distracting the efforts of enforcement. And uh, you were in that work until when? Until I believe um, the first day of Ramadan, 2005, Ramadan, 2005. I was arrested from my residence. And I was held at the Gami Police Headquarters. And uh, to this day, I haven't received any official reason as to why I was arrested. But the late Bajinka, Major Bajinka, had told me that the reason for my arrest was the introduction of the new ID cards. Because uh, President Jame felt I was interfering with his politics. President And uh, because the new ID cards would make it almost impossible for non Gambians. To access it and use it. To obtain a voter's card and vote. And quite honestly. That was exactly why I wanted it. Because as I was working in law enforcement, I would pick up on official intelligence and information about voter fraud. And my view is if you're going to win elections, it's got to be fair and square. And uh, what happened after you were released? I decided to stay in the Gambia and uh, engage in some kind of business income making activity. It goes without saying that you lost your job as well in the process. Yes, that's correct. You are not given any information as to why you were arrested. Official information as to why you were arrested. No, I was not. You want, or de therefore you are not charged with an offense. No, I was not. How how were you sacked? I was sacked in the usual The usual two line letters. Saying what? You are your services have been terminated with immediate effect. 
ñaari kaddu yi gatta lañ ci de wax rek ne sa liggey bi fim nek ni dax nañ la ci taxaway bi ne thank you for your service ene la jere jef ci sa liggey bi with your knowledge of public administration yo ne nga xam ci walum anam bi nga xamantene non la juntu way liggey kay de doxe what are your views about that sake yo naka nga gisse dax bi nga xamantene non lañ la daxon it undermines the public trust lolu dafa melni oluté nga xamné mom la nañ ñi oluté nak su fel nako it creates strife within the workplace indi na jaxal sax ci li nga xamné modi liggéyu kay bi because if any deputy understands that the moment my boss could be fired at any moment and I'll take over ndax té bu féké né ki nga xamné mo top ci sa ko bu xamé né ah man dal suma njit li mom mu nañ ko dax waxtu wu nekam ko fé man ma jël place bi your only view is to please whoever makes the decisions yo ci sa bop nak nit bu ga place bobu dina tax bé da nga bu ga bégal def li neex ki nga xamné mo wara joxé ndogal bobu the work will be compromised ligey bi mom do ko def ni ko wara defé and over a long period there will be a complete breakdown of law and order te jamono dina amina be nga xamné ligey bi du dox ci walu loi ni nga xamné non la wara doxé but all that is in addition to the illegality or the unlawfulness of the of the process wa lolu yeb lu mo woné moy mo nek ñaaka loi bi nga xamantene non lañ doxal ci ligey bi non dom démé lolu non lolu yeb da fa rax ci doli ne ah da xa bobu ñu daxala andut ak yoon andut ak loi yes that is correct i mean like they say if your best tool you can use is a hammer you tend to see everything as a nail you looking at it from the legal standpoint i'm looking at the law enforcement standpoint <laughs> so <laughs> so yes you uh, it's complimentary thank you <laughs> yes Good. So you started on uh, you embarked on a business to make money in Gambia what did you do I think yangi yangi don def jula pour am xale ci Gambia bi lan nga don def I opened this restaurant because uh whilst I was working in government uh dama ubbi won nak restaurant bax jamono yi nga xamne ma ngi do liggey ci ngour gi I noticed there wasn't any place of quality and standard in Banjo dama selu won nak ne amul ben place ci banjo bo xamne dal leku kay bu bax la bu and a jamono that would encourage senior government officers business people and other private individuals nga xamne lolu dina muna gëna xirtal ñi nga xamne ñoy kilifay nek ci walu liggey kay ak yeneen kilifa yo xamne ñu ngi liggey seen bop um we have because we had things like a, a meeting rooms and board rooms so that we would encourage the private sector to come in a nice decent area and hold meetings and have lunch. Ba te amon nañ fa bëre bo xamné mu nañ fa dajé lool dina mëna gëna hecc ñi nga xamné ñoo di liggéeyal seen bop ngir ñu mëna fa ñoo def seen dajé yoyu. And uh, it was successful. Te amon na doxon na ñi nga xamné non la ko soxla won. What was the name of the restaurant? Restaurant bo nagala tuda. Banjul Terrace Restaurant. Banjul Terrace Restaurant. Located fa lo nekkon um Gloucester is the official address is Gloucester 72 Gloucester but it's actually on Independence Drive wa ci tali Independence Drive bi fo fa la nekkon it opened up at Independence Drive but the official address is at Gloucester right fa no ni Independence Drive nga ko ubbe wa address bi Gloucester la won that's correct and uh, you said the business was successful who are the main client here nga ni business bi doxna nu wara doxe li ngeen ñoy client yi won um mainly senior government officials and uh, the many of the APRC um parliamentarians made it a hang out that they spent a lot of time there wa ñi ci upp nak moy ñi nga xamne ñoy kilifa yi liggey ci ngour gi ñi nga xamne sax ñoy député APRC ñi ci upp yeb ñom fa lañ daan ñew nak di dallo ci any notables um uh, i remember people like jaula i it's difficult to come up with the names now but i know the faces i can't mona ko na amna ñu ci ragné mu né wa ku melni jaula ak ñeneen ño xamné fatena sen touri waye ñom sen kanam mom fess na ci man lool how about colonel ndur cham how did you come to know him colonel ndur cham nak yow naka nga ñëwé bi xamanté mom My first interactions with the colonel was um whilst I was a member of National Security Council. 
Suma Yelbeni Joko a Conan Elbi, Moy Jamaljinga Hamene Mangi Bokashi National Security Council. We would attend these meetings, and that's when I got to know him. And Jay Bokanak, the Tasech in Daji Yu, Nunla Hamante Akmon. Was he a frequent customer? At uh, Banyul Terrace's restaurant? Yes, um, he was a regular at the restaurant. And uh, in the course of your interaction with him, do you recall any particular conversations you had with him regarding the governance of this country? Yes, that is true because uh, as a result of the previous meetings we've had and interactions whilst I was in government, um, we felt comfortable talking to one another about those issues. Um, looking back now, I didn't know of a moment in which he might have been satisfied with the manner in which things were going. And uh, in the, one of our conversations, that was prior to him being the CDS. I told CDS. In which he casually said, maybe it's time to change Jamie. Um, the conversation led to me asking a few questions, trying to understand where he was coming from. Um, yeah. Proceed. Yes, and because. I have a problem with um, overthrowing a government. But I also understand the God-given right of protecting oneself even if it is against the government. Uh, Proceed, please. So um, we continued the discussion, and I got to understand that his major concern. Was not the corruption, the incompetences, and all those other things. But rather the killings that he knew about. Why not Ray? Ray, you know, have no mom, have no mom, don't know. Killings by who? Ray, can can more don't Ray? In my understanding of him, that were ordered by President Jame. Man, she didn't make dal mo he didn't come down to find the guy President Jame. And he felt he would be a victim. The mom dal, the me for one dal, the man who bobo him don't ya car mo the mom samun na boka chinyo ni ni Ray. Um, I asked him if there was any particular reason for him to think he would be a victim. He said, no, it's just the way things are. You, when you become a victim, it will be overnight. Um, I didn't take him seriously. Mm -hmm. But he continued the conversation each time he comes to the restaurant. And I begin to understand that he meant what he was saying. Did you have any other conversations regarding planning and uh, uh, personnel involved? Of course, 
of course I asked him if he what kind of support he was he would he had within the military he assured me that yes he had people that were on his side that he had spoken to that would join him I decided that information should be on a need to know basis I don't need to know there was no need for me to know who was involved so we, I, I, I asked him not to tell me this is the protection for the protection of those that are involved and uh, but i wanted to know two things first i wanted to know who would replace jami should they succeed I also wanted to know whether Lang Tombong Tamba was involved. Uh, the reason uh, I asked this was first of all, he, um, Lang Tombong Tamba was his deputy. If he was involved, the chances of success will increase. If he wasn't Maybe not so. I wanted to know who would replace Jami. Because I told him if you bring in something worse than Jami, the Gambian people will not forgive you. So he, he told me that one Aliu Job, one Aliu Job was identified. I did not know Ali Job. I couldn't place him. I asked for some kind of a background on him. And when he gave me the background of Mr. Job, I objected. And number one, he's too young. He is inexperienced. And, uh, okay, and uh, someone that young being given the opportunity to be a transitional president is not likely to walk away from the office. He's going to want to stay. So that's an issue that we have to put under consideration. And uh, to the question of Lang Tombong Tamba, she told me Lang Tombong Tamba was not involved, was not aware of any of the plans. At what stage was this? This was about three to four months after the, our initial discussion, after I began to realize that he was serious. Did you have a conversation with him about this particular subject of who was involved subsequently? Um, I, like I said, I told him not to tell me who was involved. Um, for the protection of those individuals. So if there was any changes as to the status of Lang Tombong or any other person for that matter, you would not have known? I would not have known, no. <coughs> so as at the eve of the coup d'etat, you do not know who was involved except that you were told at some stage that Ali Job was earmarked for the position to replace Jami. Si ngon bi nga xamantene ne mu nol ni ci élection mu wara nek coup d'etat bi ndax yo mujjé nga xam 
Yes, that is correct because the our first the initial discussion we had about this matter up to the day that it, he attempted it was one year six months. Walau landa terdigan tebing jika waktu ane ambil mi, be best binga hamne mom la don buka def kudet tabi, dem na beti diri ab abjuan berniwer. Thank you very much. Uh, with regards to who was to replace Jame, apart from your suggestion that uh, that um, Ali Job might have been too young and inexperienced for that position. Uh, did you have any further discussions with him as to who would have been an appropriate personality? Yeah, yeah. Si jam, si jamano binga hamante yango wane. Ali Job, mom, halela, ndaola, te jar jaram shuri wud nono temen. Te lolmo tah dumuna neka njitli. Nda kontinu yenga waha mom kinga hamante yo kinga hamante fokinga ne muna ajil palas bobo. Wala muna dono jame bujo gefi. Yes, I suggested to Colonel Cham well, hello, hello, no, Colonel Trump. That should they should they succeed? I think it would be wise to approach. Um, the late Bishop Talewa Johnson. Bishop Talewa Johnson. Because of his credentials, integrity, and the less likelihood that he will be interested in becoming a president. He wouldn't have the, he's from the minority, a minority tribe. He's from a minority religion. It will be difficult for him to create a political base to stay should he want to. He had been the head of the IEC and understands elections. And I believe he would have the integrity to conduct a transitional period. I, I also suggested to him that he should not, under any circumstances, uh, ban the APRC or any political party or associate the APRC, APRC boleko, with what Jame, the administration does. Because having been in government, I could clearly see the separation between what the administration was doing and what members of the political party of APRC were doing. And he agreed to that. As an aside, uh, uh, the, the, did you consider the position of the Green Boys? Green um, Boys, the, I understand about the Green Boys um, when I was within the police because I conducted uh, recruitment that I had based entirely on U.S. standards with the support of the then IGP that had specific qualifications and a process. And right in the process of the recruitment, there was a truck that came with a, 
a truck load of people. They asked for me, one of them asked for me and gave me a letter. It, the letter was from um, Dr. Tal, who was then some big wig in the APRC. Asking me to recruit these individuals. Um, none of them had my minimum qualifications. So I just took the letter and minuted on it. Dear Dr. Tal, if you want me to recruit these people, Please respect me enough to send me people that meet my qualifications. To my surprise, no one ever talked to me about that issue. Further investigation revealed to me that these were the green boys. I do not consider them as part of the government, we all matter, but in my view, the green boys did not matter. It, it was more of a political movement. Which I have no problem with. But when it comes to professional policing, we have to separate the politics from the profession. On that note, Mr. Chair, I request that we have our first break and we return at a point you may appoint. Thank you. Thank you. We will um, take a tea break and then come back at 12:15. Uh, Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. 12:15, Mr. Chair. 12 Sorry. Minutes. Yeah. 12:10. Uh, All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Meeting is adjourned.